Occasionally on this channel, I will nerd out in appreciation over a particular artist. In conjunction with my interview with Ricky Cage, who recently won the Best New Age album with Stuart Copeland at the Grammys, my top five list today is top five things I love about Stuart Copeland. Number five, Stuart Copeland's incredible versatility. After the breakup of the police, Stuart Copeland went on to do film scoring. He joined some very different bands from the police, such as Oysterhead. He has written seven operas. He's done symphonic work. And he recently won the Grammy for Best New Age Album for his collaboration with Ricky Cage. It's pretty astonishing, and I think that Stuart Copeland surprises himself even sometimes. Number four, his sense of humor. Stuart Copeland has never taken himself too seriously. From writing expletives on his drum heads directed at Sting back in the day, to being the class clown, jokester, prankster in the police videos, Stuart was always so much fun to watch, especially in comparison to Sting, who kind of had the brooding King of Pain rock star vibe happening. Stuart is so much fun in interviews. He's a chatty Cathy and he's just so lovable. Number three is about where Stuart decides not to play. There's a famous quote from WC that music is a space between the notes. I believe that Stuart is incredibly precise and deliberate with where he holds back and where he decides to play. Take a song like Walking on the Moon. He lets the bass do exactly what it needs to do and the guitars and the vocals. It's not only where he plays and doesn't play, but it's also his decisions about which pieces to use that are so interesting and that propel the songs forward so beautifully. Number two. Is there anything more annoying than being a fan of an artist and having that artist want nothing to do with their past history? or trying to constantly distance themselves from their history. The thing I love about Stuart is he is so in touch with the police and he's very grateful for what that band has done for him that he doesn't shy away from talking about the police, from promoting the police. He just has been on the road doing a symphony deconstruction of the songs and presenting them in different ways. He's participating in promotion for a new Grace Hits package that's coming out soon. He also has a really cool book out called Drumming in the Police and Beyond, in which there's transcriptions of many of his police hits that are very cool and even have some of the effects notated in the charts. It's so welcome and it's so refreshing to see him have a really good balance between his past and his future and his present. Number one, his complete mastery of his craft and his profound impact and influence. Rolling Stone magazine listed him as number 10 on their list of all time drummers. Their readers later voted him number seven on their all time list of favorite drummers. His sound is instantly recognizable. His hi-hat mastery is so well known that Peter Gabriel tapped him to play hi-hats only on his song, Red Rain. I haven't even gotten into his cross sticking or his ride cymbal or his four on the floor patterns or his beast-like playing on songs like Synchronicity. He was also one of the absolute favorite drummers of Taylor Hawkins and a dear friend. Stuart, thank you so much for all the fantastic years. Thanks for watching. Leave me a comment and tell me some of the things that you think are the most impressive about Stuart Copeland.